Democratic Senator Al Franken has been accused of sexual assault by a reporter, a radio reporter by the name of Leanne Tweeden. Just full disclosure, Leanne Tweeden is someone who was on the show that I used to host for the network, The Point. She came on on a regular basis and I know her personally. But I didn't know this story until now because today was the first time that she spoke about her experience with Al Franken back in 2007. Now, she shared her account in a published article for ABC, and she accused him of kissing and groping her without consent during a 2006 USO tour of the Middle East before he took public office. So I apologize, it was 2006, not 2007. She wrote that it occurred in December of 2006, not long before Christmas, when she was a performer for the tour alongside Mr. Franken, then a well known comedian. Now, there were two components of her accusations that really stood out to me and to most people. The first accusation is what he did to her, allegedly did to her. Uh, physically. According to Miss Tweeden's account, Mr. Franken wrote a body script that included a kiss for the two to perform on stage. When it came time to rehearse the skit, she wrote, Mr. Franken insisted on kissing despite her protestations. So she didn't want to kiss, and then he uh, went for it, and she claims that he grabbed her uh, in the back of the neck and, and, and tried to make it happen, but she pushed him off. She says, I immediately pushed him away with both my hands against his chest and told him if he ever did that to me again, I wouldn't be so nice about it next time. I walked away. All I could think about was getting to a bathroom as fast as possible to rinse the taste of him out of my mouth. I felt disgusted and violated. Now, Al Franken has released two statements in response to these allegations. The first statement was very brief. He wrote, I certainly don't remember the rehearsal for the skit in the same way, but I send my sincerest apologies to Leanne. As to the photo, it was clearly intended to be funny, but wasn't. I shouldn't have done it. So that gets to the second part of the allegation, and this is where she has pretty damning evidence. Let's go to graphic number three, please. She shared this photo of the tour that she was speaking of. She had fallen asleep because she had just returned from a tour in Afghanistan. She was a member of the military, she is a veteran. And while she was asleep, Franken posed in this way for the photo. And it's degrading, it's disgusting and Franken later released a longer statement addressing that component of the allegations. So let me go ahead and read that to you right now. He says, I don't know what was in my head when I took that picture and it doesn't matter. There's no excuse. I, I look at it now and I feel disgusted with myself. It isn't funny, it's completely inappropriate. It's obvious how Leanne would feel violated by that picture. And what's more, I can see how millions of other women would feel violated by it. Women who have had similar experiences in their own lives. Women who fear having those experiences. Women who look up to me, women who have counted on me. And the truth is what people People think of me in light of this is far less important than what people think of women who continue to come forward to tell their stories. They deserve to be heard and believed, and they deserve and they deserve to know that I am their ally and supporter. I have let them down, and I am committed to making it up to them. So we have some video of Leanne Tweeden speaking to Jake Tapper. We'll get to that in just a minute, but I kind of want to open it up to you guys and and hear your thoughts. We were talking about this earlier today, and so we've covered it. Uh, I, uh, it's 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 a problem because there is a a spectrum. It seems there's a, a there are different uh, gradations of sexual uh, misconduct. So we the apology as it reads, you really don't know how bad the sexual misconduct was, right? It's, it was a it was a pretty powerful apology, mm -hmm. um, and. I, as a man, feel sort of awkward even commenting or judging the gradations. I can certainly say this is different than stalking a 14-year-old at a mall and then you're trying to, or calling her to high school and trying to take, ask her out on a date when you're in your 30s. I mean, I can definitely separate these two things, but I guess what I'm trying to get at is 
this, this is wrong, but with all of these allegations coming forward, I'm having trouble ordering them all and assigning a priority to how bad each one is. I'm not excusing this at all. I'm simply trying to order it because no, they're I all get getting jumbled together. I get what you mean. And and look, I think I think most rational people know that there's a difference between, you know, um, outright sexual assault or pedophilia and, you know, what happened to Leanne Tweeden is horrible and she she felt violated and degraded and I think most women would feel like that. No one has any right to put their hands on anyone else without consent and taking that degrading picture was um, you know, beyond offensive and degrading. However, um, look, I think that women, all women are different. All women respond to different, you know, different types of assault or different types of harassment in, in various ways. And so what might be considered not a big deal if it's an ass grab to one woman might end up, you know, really making another woman feel incredibly unsafe or, you know, degraded, whatever it is. And so I hate getting into these discussions about what's worse, but I think what's more important to focus on is this broader discussion about this sense of entitlement that all of these perpetrators have had, right? Like I think that's like the one constant among the all of them. The power thing. The yeah. power thing and the abuse of power and this sense <laughs> of entitlement, the sense of, yeah, I'm going to do this and I'm not worried about any consequences. Yeah. And think about this, this happened in 2006. There never were any consequences. He went on to be a senator, he went on to live his life. And this was something that she quietly lived with behind the scenes for all this time. And it's because she felt that she couldn't come forward because people were gonna attack her. And by the way, that has happened. And she talks about that with Jake Tapper. Now, I wanna go to her videos, video number two. She talks about why in a lot of cases, women don't come forward. Decades will go by and they will just remain quiet. Take a look. I was nervous to come out about it. This doesn't make me feel good. Everybody goes, oh, you're so strong. You're gonna feel so great talking about it. I still have a knot in my stomach. This is, you know, this isn't some like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do it and I feel great about it. It's you difficult. Know. It's difficult to do. It is hard. Why do you think there are people that haven't talked? There's still a lot of people that haven't told their stories. And there, you know, in, in the case of Roy Moore, there are people that 40 years later that are reluctantly coming out about it. I mean, it's it's embarrassing. It's humiliating. There are still people I've looked on Twitter that are still blaming me for it. I'm like, you look at the picture. I'm asleep, and there's still somehow it's my fault. Right. Really? Okay. Al Franken has come out and apologized and said, you know what? It, that was in poor taste. I thought it was funny, and it's still my fault. Well, That's okay. why women don't come out. Well, I mean, first of all, the biggest mistake uh, she's made, the only mistake she's made, is going on Twitter. You should not. She should not go on Twitter because mm -hmm. she's only going to get that kind of criticism. I think, you know, the, the attention grabbing thing here is the is the photograph, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's got to me that obfuscates the real. The, the, the if true disgusting thing that Franken did with was right. push himself on. You have to remember too, Al Franken in 2006 was months before he even announced his candidacy for Senate. He'd been in a writer's room at Saturday Night Live and we've all read books or at least articles about what that life was like for a very long time. He was a goofball and I didn't think he was that funny ever until he wrote a book which was funny. So. The, the, the photograph of him going like this, as stupid as that is and as offensive as that is, that's probably the goofball comedian thing that he's prone to doing. And I think it, it, it really takes the story in a different direction because it's not just that. It's that he forced himself upon a woman mm -hmm. in that situation when it didn't have to happen. And if that's true, and listen, I, the other thing that happens with these stories, and I don't know anything about Franken, but Every single time this happens, there are other accusers who follow. There, mm -hmm. there are other stories, other anecdotes. It hasn't happened yet with Franken, and it may tomorrow, it may tonight, it may with somebody else. And we forget about Franken because this is happening in, in such rapid fire. But I think that, that what people have to, you know, keep hold of with this Franken thing is what is, is he violated this woman and not in that stupid photograph, which was stupid to take, and he did violate her. But I mean. I just think the context of Al Franken, a comedian, is very different than Al Franken, a man in a position of power mm -hmm. who was a comedian with a younger performer violating 
her womanhood, violating everything about her. And, and I, so I just think that the picture to me serves as a distraction to what the real offense was. Yeah, I have a different take on the on the picture. Yeah, um, well, which, you, which you're probably right about, because I think yeah. I might be in a minority about this, but I, I just think the context of, of a, a, a comedian who I never found funny doing something that was really not funny is, is, is that. And, and that's um, a little bit of the you know explanation that he got at in his longer statement. Did, you know? he, did he talk? Yeah, he did, he did. So I wanna be clear, when I read the longer statement, that wasn't the full statement. You should read the full statement for yourself. Um, but he does get into how, you know, at the time, he thought this was funny, it was like a comedy thing. But look, the, think about, I don't care if you're a comedian, because think about what this um, really communicates to a woman like Leanne Tweeden, or women in general. She had literally gotten back from a tour in Afghanistan. She's wearing her military gear, okay? and. He poses in a picture where he's degrading her by pretending like he's grabbing her breast while she's asleep. By the way, she didn't know the picture was being taken. She didn't even find out about it until much later. It's right? inexcusable. It is yeah, inexcusable. It's inexcusable. And I so, just mean that I don't want it to distract from what he actually no, did. No, that yeah. I agree with yeah. you on because yeah. you know the physical assault is, right. is, is a serious accusation, and there's since there's. Proof in in the form of a photo of the second part of the allegation. It makes the first that, part more believable, and that's right. what Michael's saying. That that's essentially stealing the the spotlight on this story. And uh, we can rank the two things. I mean, the sexual assault or or the uh, the physical assault, better mm -hmm. maybe better put uh, that I think ranks worse. Uh, he was it's sophomoric. It's like a frat house thing. Right. She's asleep, and you're going out, and it's and he's you know leaning into the picture. It was clearly done in that comic spirit for him. But it didn't pass the litmus test of comedy as yeah. as we've, as we've Which, seen. Which by the way, none of this stuff really did. When he was on Saturday Night Live, I don't, you guys, probably, you remember, I didn't think he was that funny. So, no, and, and, and this was, I, this was I, exactly like in I, line with his humor. I disagree, I, th I think, yeah, I think Al Franken, and, uh, and here's why it matters to us because uh, he was a voice of, uh, uh, he was a clear voice on Capitol Hill as he segued into the Democratic Party, sure. and so it, it so it hurts and kind of smarts on that level as well. But uh, but yeah. whether it, it was funny or not, it yeah, funny. It yeah it that happened. that wasn't funny, and it doesn't stand the right. test of time. Yes, uh, it does not stand the test of time. Um, finally, I just want to go to another video of Leanne Tweeden uh, speaking to Jake Tapper. She was asked if she um, accepts his apology, and I thought her answer was interesting. Take yeah. a look. Uh, do you accept his apology? I do. I do, and you know, the one that came out this morning, um, I accepted that one too, it was very short and very brief. My initial reaction was, it sounded like a staffer put that out hastily, you know, which maybe could have been the truth, you know, to get it out quickly because when it hit, it was, you know, it went viral and it was everywhere. Um, but that one did seem heartfelt and I believe it and I believe him, you know, and I I honestly do believe him and you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't waiting for an apology from him, but I gladly accept it and, and thank you, do Senator you, Franken, you, and yeah. Do you want him to call you? Sure. That last question, I know I know what he meant by that last yeah, question, it did sound but it was weird. so weird. It sounded really weird. It sounded so, weird, yeah. So, would you like a second date? Yeah, would you yeah. like him to call uh, you? Anyway. And um, it, it's, it, the whole dynamic is, is, is fascinating because we haven't seen the accuser asked that these accusers asked about this and yeah. and you know and going back to the photo also the more evidence you have of something like this the more believable the crux of the story is so Absolutely. if you have that goofy thing that 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 he thought he was being goofy about that photo even if it isn't the offense it makes the offense certainly seem more credible. Absolutely, you know? and I Absolutely. think that's an important. Um, Although, again, I see the two so differently. I, I don't know that that really is true. I see one as a wah wah, and and it really being a stupid idea, but in that category. And then the other is a guy trying to take a shot or something like a really. No, you know, I know, but I, I, I what, what I mean, what I mean is that, that you see that there's this sort of this line of thinking in this man's head at that time. That could lead you to believe that, that he would have done this, that. Yeah. He sexualizes so, okay. this woman. So one other thing that I want to get to before we um, go to break, because this is also an important component to the story. Um, Al Franken um, took responsibility and apologized immediately, and that's what he should do. And um, I'm glad that he apologized. Uh, 
But you don't see the same type of behavior from someone like Roy Moore who remains defiant. Um, he has now been accused by several women um, who said that you know they, they were uh, preyed upon when they were teenagers. He was banned from a mall, he was banned from a YMCA because he was known to go to those uh, places looking for uh, teen girls that he could prey on and I mean, there are people in Alabama who knew him and knew about this open secret talking to the media. These are not liberals, these are not progressives. These are Trump supporting Alabamans that, did I say that right, Alabamans? Yeah, Alabamians. Alabamians, I, yes. No, who, I would have accepted the way she said it. Well, you probably can accept, but they, they say Alabamian. Or anyway, okay. Yeah. Anyway, but, um, doesn't matter. So they're coming they're Trump forward supporting. and they're talking about you know what they experienced and Roy Moore. Here's what he tweeted about the Franken story today that I thought was amazing. Al Franken admits guilt after photographic evidence of his abuse surfaces. Mitch, meaning Mitch McConnell, let's investigate. Which by the way, to Mitch McConnell's credit, he did want to do an ethics investigation into Al Franken. And then he says, in Alabama, zero evidence, allegations 100% rejected. By the way, 100% rejected by whom? By you, you're the only person who rejects them. Right. And then Mitch McConnell, again to his credit, says that Moore must quit immediately or be expelled. So he's complaining that Mitch McConnell is treating him similarly to how he's treating Al Franken. Well. Yeah, can I, can I have that for a yeah, second? Sure. Okay, first of all, Al Franken is a US Senator. There is a process by which you go through, Roy Moore is not. Mm -hmm. So for him to say that Roy, Roy Moore should not be a candidate, should not stand, should drop out, should be expelled, all those things, he has a right to say, he's a citizen. Al Franken has to go through this process if the process is to begin. It's one that Franken wants to go through, that Chuck Schumer said he should go through. I, I'm gonna challenge you on one of the things you said to his credit, he said, let's investigate. Mm -hmm. uh, in moments, moments after Al Franken, had this allegation, Mitch McConnell said, let's investigate. Mm -hmm. When we knew about 15 women who accused candidate Donald Trump of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, when we saw a tape where he said, grab him by the pussy, Mitch McConnell said nothing. I will you know? totally and, concede, and, 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 and I agree with and, you 100%. And Mitch McConnell allowed his wife to serve in the cabinet of this man. So mm -hmm. I think there's a spinelessness about Mitch McConnell in this case that is inexcusable. That said, uh, the, the the Roy Moore remark about 100% unbelievable, that 100% yeah. refuted because people seem to be glomming onto this stuff in a right. big way. And you know? more and more, accusa more accusations came out today. So yeah. um, they will continue and uh, we'll see what happens with Roy Moore, but he remains defiant, refuses to uh, you know, uh, pull out of the Senate race in Alabama. It, it looks more and <laughs> it looks, more greater and, more. and greater, like yeah. uh, like like uh, Doug Jones will be the senator uh, from Alabama. The polling has been high. As a matter of fact, there was a poll today, which I actually don't believe, that said that showed that Barack Obama is more popular in Alabama than Roy Moore is, which is astonishing to me. It's astonishing that yeah. it would be astonishing. Yeah. Right, well, right, that's like true. No, right, right, right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pedophilia or Barack Obama. <laughs> right. Uh, Twenty. One seconds, I want. It's important for the Democratic Party here. Mm -hmm. All these senators have come out and criticized Al Franken. The Democrats have to take the right stand on this issue. And if it's true and these things happened, there should be no patience for Al Franken in, in this case because of the brand. And I think, and I said this to Mark earlier, I think this guarantees and these the series of allegations should guarantee that a woman is on the ticket in 2020, either at the top or the bottom of the ticket because I, I think the Democrats can own this issue and can get women voters to understand. And I, I'm not apologizing that it's politics because he's a senator and this is politics and we're talking about elections. They should own this and show women that they are the party that's standing up to it while you see these Republicans coddling this pedophile in Alabama, this accused pedophile in Alabama. So I think it's an opportunity too and they can sacrifice Al Franken's Senate seat. He's a good senator with good voting record and all of that, but he can easily be replaced by another Democrat. And I, you know, I pointed this out earlier too, is that Keith Ellison is a, a congressman from Minnesota, a possibility for or their governor, Mark Dayton, a former senator, to appoint to the Senate seat should Al Franken resign, which we're not even close to having happen. And then if Roy Moore wins and Keith Ellison is the senator, Roy Moore is serving with a Muslim. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Help us build independent media together. Come join us, tytnetwork.com slash join.